We are now live. Let me pull this over to Twitch real quick. Maybe, possibly, we're live now. Checking audio. Yep, we're good. Okay, 269. Okay. Ready? Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 269 of the Security Podcast here on the N30 Network. My name is Hayam, and there is, before I introduce him, do you accept this cookie that I'm about to give you? I only accept the functional cookies. Okay, but what about third-party advertising cookies? No. What, are they peanut butter? Not those. I don't know. We, we, we're going to agree that, I know that, you, that you're a terrible person, but oatmeal raisin... Your only your only choice are oatmeal raisin cookies. That's fine. I'm okay yeah. with oatmeal raisin. Yeah, I know. I know. Tom's a heathen. Direct all I'm your hate that way. Uh, if you would like okay. to tell me that I'm wrong about my cookie preferences, you can join the Security in 30 Signal group uh, and let your opinion be known there about your favorite and least favorite type of cookies. Yeah, so we agree that Tom is accepting. He didn't accept all cookies. He just accepted some of them. But you know what's going to happen? I'm going to forget. And then next week, I'm going to ask Tom the exact same question. And that gets really annoying. So obviously, we are talking about cookie banners and what they are and, and everything else. But And the bane of our existence. But let's first start with, what is a cookie? And I know they're great and yummy, except for oatmeal raisin. But... um. No, there's a data cookie, and Tom's going to explain what a data cookie is. So, uh, simply put, cookies are teeny tiny pieces of of information that your computer, your web browser, can use to interact and interface with websites. Uh, So, a common thing is staying logged into a website. You put in your username and password, you click that box that says, remember me, and uh, usually the server, like, generates some kind of, like, unique one-time code, some hash thing, and sends it to your your browser, and your browser says, cool, I have this now, I'm going to hand you this piece of data once I, once I come back. So, generally, and I'm, I'm looking for something like, like keys right you, you get like a one-time little key that the website hands you and next time you get back to the website you're like oh hey i have this key here you go see it's me or it's more like a membership card really uh and the website says yeah okay this looks valid it's not expired cool you can come in um so cool it's it's a really simple succinct technology that uh has been abused to death by advertisers and advertising tech companies uh, because you can use these cookies to say, hey, um, you're this this person, right? You're this guy? Yeah, uh, by the way, because my ads are all over the place, uh, I'm gonna ask you for this, this ID for every single site you go to. Every single site you go to, you're handing over your membership card to uh, whatever advertisers are running on that site, right? And it's There's a bunch of technical details about, like, cookie origins and same-site policies, and basically the only thing you have to understand about that is, generally speaking, um, when a domain hands you a cookie, like, you know, DoubleClick, the ad provider on whatever website you're on, will hand you a cookie, DoubleClick can only ask for its own cookies back. Uh, When you're on a website that hands you a cookie from a different domain, those are called... um, Shoot, why did I just blank on it? Not third-party cookies. Third-party cookies. Oh, it is third-party cookies. Okay, I blanked on my blanking. Yeah, third-party cookies. Uh, And generally, third-party cookies, generally, there are exceptions, uh, third-party cookies are used exclusively in tracking, advertising, metrics collection, data gathering, that sort of thing. It's not all nefarious, necessarily, right? If you're running a website and you want to make sure that everything's performant, you might have a tracking application or a tracking service that you use to make sure that, okay, the user clicked it at this timestamp. How long did it take for that page to render? Wow, four and a half seconds. That's way too long. And you can see it in dashboards. Oh, hey, look, here's a latency spike here. We need to tune up this section of our web app. Um, So they're not all bad, but they are 
overwhelmingly used to track you for one reason or another. Most often, that's because of ads. Well, I was going to say, cookies inherently, when they were first created, was literally the membership card. Hey, how do we I address you? Like, literally, hi, Tom, or like, hi, hi. Light mode, Lanier. dark mode. Like, hey, do you want this yeah. website to have a cool, kitschy theme? Uh, well, if you want the website to be purple, we're going to give you a cookie that says website theme equals purple. And when you come back to us, you hand us the cookie back that says, I would like this website to be purple, please. And the web server says, cool, here's the purple version. I mean... That, and and for that that was awesome i mean you give and it's one of those things if you're already logged in you don't have to re-log in so there were a lot of good uses but then somebody said and i think you hit it and double click said hmm if we put this cookie on and we put a cookie on every site then we know where you're going and if we know where you're going we can put that into our fancy and i'm using my jazz hands algorithm because that's the keyword and it will figure out what you want and how to do things and track you across the internet. And then, and that's where problems ar arose. So I think we told you years ago, uh, <clears throat> I found a way in Chrome to block all cookies. I, like that's what I did. I blocked all cookies. So every time I restarted, all the cookies would go away. Yes. It was really annoying to have to re log in, but I had a password manager. So it just, I just, okay. It came on last pass auto filled it. I hit enter and it was less annoying but i knew that the cookies weren't there but that got to be really really daunting and then chrome stopped that and i you can still do it and now i'm just like i, I don't have time just block the third party cookies you on the website you want to get information of me if i log in fine fine whatever just on the website just don't track me and then we have all these other problems that the ad tech companies are getting it so now we're blocking third party cookies and and so now we want to get into, okay, so we know why they're important. We, we get that. Okay. We talked about the data they store. Like we said, it could be whatever you want. And like you said, they're not nefarious. They're just, they're just there. They can be weaponized, but gen for, I, I want to knock on wood and say for the most part, they're not. So the problem is, is that, uh, so the EU, and I'm going to let Tom explain this in a second is the EU said, Hmm, there's data here. Are are the are the companies explaining correctly what what data they're store? I don't know if the user wants all this data being stored. Maybe we should ask them. And then here comes the cookie law. Yeah. So the EU wanted to give their citizens the ability to say, "I would like this data tracked about me, and this data not." Right? They wanted the user to be able to make the determination of. Yeah, that like state login cookie, I want that one. That other cookie that tracks you against every single news site that I visit, I don't want that one. Uh, and so they uh, they wrote a law that essentially made uh, that essentially required website operators to put in a banner that says, "Hey, we use cookies, by the way," because the law was written in such a way that made it so any and all cookies, or the vast majority of cookies, were covered under this. So if you had something as simple as, I would like the website to be purple now, uh, as a theme cookie, uh, that would have to be covered under one of these banners. Or at least in the way the law is interpreted, somebody could make the mistake of saying, yeah, this needs to be covered under a cookie banner. So now, every single website that you go to on the internet has a big giant cookie banner cookie pop-up cookie sidebar cookie bottom bar cookie something somewhere and it's horribly annoying but not only is it horribly annoying it's horribly dangerous and frankly broken oh well, that that's the other thing so i don't remember I don't remember when I first started seeing cookie banners. It wasn't terribly long ago, but it, it's been so pervasive recently. So it started in the EU, EU, and then it was, and I think I saw a lot more cookie ads when GDPR came about. So GDPR is another one of these type of laws that say, that's I, it's actually pretty good uh, for privacy and says, it says this is the data that people have to store. But I think as as companies became more global they have to they had to appeal to the european the eu citizens so they just put cookie banners on everything and it started being like hey do you want cookies yes or no okay yes now it's do you want cookies yes which cookies do you want and or accept all like okay i want these and then you come back okay again and again and again fine just take all the cookies i don't care and i think that's what you're getting at it's like 
So we, now we see this all the time and our response is fine. Just, I, I don't care. I just want to read the site. So generally, uh, I'm a fan of GDPR. I like GDPR. I think it comes from a really good place. Uh, the cookie law also came from a good place, but it was really, really horribly implemented and terribly explained. And it's it's not good. I am not a fan of the cookie law. I think it's worthless and dangerous for end users. Uh, so like you were saying, you, you get these cookie pop-ups that are now asking, well, do you want just the functional cookies or do you want us to try to collect your social security number and sell it to the highest bidder on the black market? And Generally, you'll get with those advanced cookie banners, you'll get a toggle, right? You'll get like sell my data on the black market. Okay, we'll turn that off. Keep me logged in. We'll turn that on. But it requires the user to go through like this big giant checklist. Uh, some of these banners are well implemented and they allow you to say one click functional cookies only, uh, but the majority of them don't or they just have an accept button. And frankly, uh, it doesn't matter whether you want, uh, you know, the functional only or the selling of black market cookies because eventually the user is going to get annoyed. They're just going to click accept and that'll be the end of the transaction. And that's, and, and that's the problem. Instead of, see, we talk about the law, what, what they're doing. They're saying, hey companies, you could be terrible as long as you disclose it. I wish they would have fought it. Why don't we solve the problem? <laughs> Uh, what we're actually store. Do you want light mode, dark mode? That's awesome. I mean, I'm not saying put a five minute YouTube video on what what cookies they're stealing and how they're using using it, but it's. I think we should go to a point of, of uh, um, what's it called? The point of you're you're trying to solve. You're trying to make the user experience better. So if you need something, you want to call them by their right name, or you want them to be pre-logged in, or whatever it is, then that's fine. But as soon as you start saying, "Hmm, how can we monetize this?" Maybe that's not the right answer. And and if the EU can put any of the regulations, how about that one? Like, don't yeah. monetize privacy stuff. Don't use two-factor phone numbers to to sell against. Why don't we focus on that? So uh, t today, uh, thanks thanks to this cookie law, and I, I mean not not just today, like pretty much literally for the past 10, 15 years. Like it's it's been a while since the cookie law was a, a thing. Um, and now you have a million and a half different consulting companies and service providers and open source projects, and everyone in their mother has a solution to the cookie banner problem. It's like, nah, it's cool. We've got it. Now we're going to centralize your cookie banners and your cookie banner acceptance into this service model that you pay this much per month for. And if you want enterprise grade support, you're gonna pay like this fee on top of it. And now we have these, these cookie banner companies or these compliance companies with a bunch of data about how the users are or are not accepting cookies. And we've literally just moved the goalposts to crappy consultancy businesses. It is infuriating in a really fundamental way. It's I get somebody saying, Hey, we're, we need this information for analytics on our end. We're not going to do anything with it. Now, the problem cool. is they say they're not going to do anything, but I'm, we want to make sure the website runs properly. Like when you install something that says, Hey, uh, Apple or Android, can we send crash statistics to the, to the developer? I usually say yes. Um, unless I'm particularly annoyed by certain developers, but usually I say yes, because it sounds like the way it was worded it sounds like, Hey, they're not going to do anything unless something crashes. And if it crashes, can we send uh, the pertinent information? Yes, because I don't want the program to crash. I mean, it's like, hey, we want to know if you like light theme or dark theme. Can we store that information? Yeah, sure. Again, they don't say, hey, we're going to put your, mar your stuff on the black market. Because, of course, everyone would obviously say no. But so can we share it with trust? I love this. Trusted third parties. I don't know. How much does trust cost? I feel like I Literally feel like pennies. I could buy an NFT. Literally yeah, I, I feel like I, I could buy an NFT of trust and use that. Uh, every every it's, third party yeah. that that you are in business with is trusted, uh, and that's well. So, so I, I don't want to hijack the conversation yet, but I 
the question of we're going to sell you uh, uh, relevant ads. So relevant versus irrelevant ads. And I watch a lot of uh, insert fake news program here. And there's a lot of uh, Medicare ads, a lot of Medicare. I see Tom Selleck almost all the time. Okay. That does not, I, I don't need to see Tom Selleck anymore telling me a reverse mortgage is right for me. Um, because obviously the fake news, whatever, pure channel, uh, they don't know who's watching or not watching yet, or they know that only old people, unemployed people watch in the morning or the afternoon, whatever it is. But that was the whole soap opera idea. You watch prices, right? You always got denture commercials because that's who was watching it. If they can target it, you get something better. And I'm not saying I don't like targeted ads. I see stuff that's like, hmm, this is interesting. But I don't, I, I feel like i rather the denture ads at some point. I, I rather say, you know what? Um, I think this is going too far, especially after I bought the item. Then you see it for months and months and months. And sometimes like Google AdSense will say, hey, I've already bought this. Or Facebook ads would say, I already bought this. And then they try it again. It's like, you could buy a second one. No, I don't need a second battery powered lawnmower. That's not how that works. So I, I'm all for getting better relevant ads. I just don't want the ads for like really creepy things. I don't know if that's a, if that's a, I don't want creepy things ads, cookie, cookie banner. So I, I like relevant ads. I just want them to be more relevant and less stupid. And if you can't do that, let's get rid of, uh, what's it called? All the relevant ads and just go to denture commercials. I, I gotta say, and I'm, I'm absolutely going to date myself here. Um, the, the contextual ads on GeoCities and Angel Fire sites were more accurate to me than all of these like interest in tracking based relevant ads are today. Uh, and and how, how that works is that like interest based ads and tracking based ads are trying to create a profile of you or whoever is using your computer at the time to show you advertisements that would be applicable to you personally. The issue is that you're exactly right. Like they get really bad really quickly. I, I haven't seen a, a relevant ad in a long while, honestly. Uh, but the contextual based ads on older websites and some app ad platforms today will instead just look at the contents of the page, right? Are you on a dirt bike enthusiast forum? Well, guess what? You've got ads for helmets and riding gear and dirt bikes and mechanics and gasoline and oil types. And, you know, it's all based around the content of that page. And, and frankly, those kind of ads work great. Um, but we're, we're kind of digressing a little bit. So why, why are cookie banners so dangerous? Uh, and it's honestly a, a problem of training. Uh, so InfoSec people everywhere, IT people everywhere, help desk people everywhere have been trying to get end users to do one thing and literally only one thing for their entire existence. And that is read what is on the screen before you click OK. And the only thing these cookie banners are doing is enabling users to say, um, oh, it's a pop up. Click yes. Oh, it's a pop-up, click yes. Oh, it's a pop-up that says that you're gonna charge me $500, click yes. Ah, oh, I thought it was a cookie thing. Shoot, now I'm out 500 bucks. Uh, but literally, it's just training users to blindly click on every single dialogue that pops up because it doesn't matter where they go across the internet today, they're gonna get like accosted with a deluge of cookie banners that they're just gonna click yes to. And that is not the type of user training that I have worked my entire life to bring about. Well, I mean, remember in the mid nineties, we had literal pop-ups to the point that we all agreed as all the browsers fought the pop-ups now. So, so what comes first? First comes the cookie banner, right? So you have to hit accept, then comes download our app. Would you like our website as an app in web view? No. Okay. Then it comes with the, the newsletter because apparently newsletter has better metrics. And then after you get all of that, there's probably something else that I'm forgetting. And it's like, no, I just wanted, oh, the subscription model. You've read your five subscriptions. Wait, wait. So I've been here already five times. And now you made me say no to the last four times. And then, no, I'm not paying the you. The fake chat bubble at the bottom. Hey, we noticed yeah. you were browsing around. Do you need any help? Hi, I'm David. I'm here to help you today. Would you like to make a purchase? And it's literally just the same text everywhere. And David, David connects after you click on that box.
Was he like Jake from State Farm? I, uh, uh, it, the amount of like fake chat windows on websites, it, it's truly infuriating because I know, I know what people are trying to do. There are some websites out there that are really trying their hardest to be super nice to people like, hey, do you need support? Here's a box right here. You just type into it. Doesn't matter what it is. And we'll try to help you. Thank you for that. But look, I would much rather have that be like in a support page, like link it from your main page, right? Like link, talk to us on your main page. Cool. Don't pop it up. Don't, don't put a little banner at the bottom. I honestly don't care. I am there for one reason to go to your website. If I wanted to talk to you, I would click that section of your website. But maybe Here's I'm the too million picky. Dollar I Here's the million dollar idea. If you would like us to call you, please put your phone number. Don't call us. We'll call you when we can. These are our business hours. I mean, well, I like to call. I, I, I admit, I, I, I do not like chat features. Maybe because I grew up at the beginning of the internet where the bots were terrible and they would take hours to respond. It's like, I need this really simple thing. Can you do this? Well, did you reboot your router yet? Yes, because I have internet. That's not the issue. Oh, then what's the issue? I need a new IP. Can you do that? Well, did you reboot your... It's a problem, and I know they've gotten better, but for me, I just much rather talk to somebody. So then yep. you get the so I much rather them here put your phone numbers and we'll call you. That I, there's your idea, or the whole callback. For it. If you would like us to call you back, press one now. Cool. cool. Done. Oh, um, and we'll call you back. Just in case, I know I know this is kind of kind of irrelevant, but I I have to ask. I'm legally obligated to to ask our listeners, um. If they would like me to contact them about their car's extended warranty. Yeah. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. I mean, I mean, I had to tell people that I don't have a car. And they're like, but we see you have a car. Nope, no car. But we're calling your work. Call, don't worry about it. I don't fire. I walk to work. Yeah, yeah, there's no car. I mean, anyway. I, I just want to say that cars right now, if you have a newer, newish car, they're pretty reliable. I mean... For the most part, if your car is like 20 years old with 150, 200,000 miles, that's a different story. But anyway, so, so again, you're, we, we keep on talking. Like, you're right. It's not only do you have to click the cookie banners, you have to click the, the no newsletter, the no ad, the no app, the no this, the no that. And yes, we're getting into the thing. And then what they're doing is they're clicking and right where the no is or the yes is, the next thing pops up. So you, you pick that up. And it's one of those, I, I, I don't know what they're trying to, I, well, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get eyeballs and they're trying to make money and they're doing it in really shady ways. I wonder, can the, the U-Block origins of the world, like, I wonder if they can solve the problem. Like, so, you're going to have to yes to the cookie banner, but. That honestly was my suggestion. If you're using U-Block origin, which you should be, because it's literally the best ad blocker out there. Fight me, you're wrong. Nothing else is better than yeah. U-Block origin. Uh, pie hole is cool. It ain't you block origin, all right? Just not. Uh, so when you see one of those banners, if you don't want to ever see it again, right click and you can you can tell you block, hey, this thing, I don't want to see it ever again. And you block will just add it to your custom list and it'll it'll never show it again. And by the way, this is like a general pro tip for most of the internet. If you have you block origin and you see something on a website you don't like, you see like an image or a sidebar or a menu item or just the picture of your friend on, on your social media page, and you don't want to see his ugly mug again, right-click that, block it with you, block Origin, and it's gone. Like, it's just out of there. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece of software, uh, and I cannot thank the developer enough. Like, man. Well, I have this better idea. Well, I, I know the websites don't want to... I mean, I don't think any website wants to put cookie banners. We don't. I, have, I, I don't think... We don't. So why don't they call it... Uh, like a uniform ID, some UID that's standard across all the websites. And then you block R to just pick this standard one and a cookie banner preference. Which ones do you want? Cause they're all the same. Like, let's just integrate that. And if you're using the WordPress series of blogs or you're using AdSense or you're using some big, some mammoth ad tech company that they're going to track. Can we just get that? And, and, and say across all our sites, this is what's going to happen. I mean, so I, I for, don't think this is a hard problem. For websites that actually make an effort at complying, right? For for websites today that have these cookie banners, yeah, that would work. Uh, the issue with with all of these laws, GDPR included, is that 
bad actors are going to bad act. Um, right? Like, if if you're relying on website operators, ad tech companies, uh, data brokers to work together and collaborate with your laws, you've kind of already lost, right? Like, it, frankly, it's it's a societal solution to a technological problem, which doesn't really work out well most of the time, right? You, you're expecting uh, nefarious ad tech companies, not not the double clicks of the world, right? Like Google, Google is not going to. Uh, this is a bad example because Google has uh, flown in the face of of laws lots and lots of times. Okay, never mind. Basically, we can only rely on technology at this point because the laws are meaningless, um, which isn't entirely true, but. You get the sentiment, right? I know what you were trying to say. Yeah. You're trying to say that Google has double click is not going to be is going to be a good steward of ads exactly. and ad tech. They're, and, they're not and going to be else. like and we're overtly trying. evil, just like standard yeah. company brand evil, right? It's like diet evil. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I would use Facebook. Even Facebook's not trying to be that evil, but the answer is yes, they are. And, they, Facebook and, isn't diet evil. They're like the low calorie, low sugar evil. Like it's not not quite like straight up just hardcore evil it's like yeah it's a little bit less than that but not by much it's enough to count it's the it's the dark corner where you're downloading your torrents evil that they're installing all this other stuff exactly. that that's the problem so it's just it, it it just it pains me because it just makes the internet such a terrible place. And what they're trying to do is trying to enforce some privacy. And in the meantime, just wrapping it all up is we're getting we're giving cookies a bad name because they're not terrible. And we're we're giving we're we're creating a whole bunch of users who don't read anything and they're just blatantly clicking yes. And then we're still tracking them and nothing's being accomplished other than wasting everyone's time. And yep. it's just, it's, it's terrible. I want to end, but is there, is, we, we were going to talk about some ransomware, but I don't know if there's anything really to talk about or we just want to push that off. Uh, ransomware is getting pretty beefy. Um, I've been paying attention to the news. That was a hilarious pun. If there, if you haven't been, uh, we'll probably talk about it next episode. Details right. are still emerging. It's a pretty fresh story. Ransomware attack on beef producers. Uh, yeah, it's it's a thing. Um, so what can you do about cookie banners? And I know I talked about this a bit, but uBlock Origin, when you see those things and you don't want to see them, right-click it, block that stuff with uBlock, and it goes away. Now, how does this help you on your mobile device? Well, you can actually, Firefox on Android, you can run extensions. So you can block stuff like that on Firefox on Android. Get on it, it's really cool. Uh, honestly, moving to iOS, that's the main thing I've missed is extensions in Firefox because iOS doesn't have them. Um, not really a great solution there. I just click the X and keep getting annoyed. Sorry. Look, um, I mean, the good news is that I think Apple is more privacy focused on on some of the stuff. So you may see the cookie banners, but overall they're they're working with the privacy and and I mean we saw there was a, there was an article ninety six percent of people said no to Facebook tracking. So that that's a good step forward in there. Like you said, I'm there's no uh, iOS uh, extension support, but well that you that kind of follows the same thing, right? Like. Apple isn't making technological leaps and bounds to prevent Facebook from tracking you. The only thing they're asking is they said, hey, Facebook, will you comply with this? By the way, if you don't, we'll kick you off the App Store. So, uh, better. And Facebook says, yeah. fine, I guess. Right? There's, there's nothing, like, technological in the way to stop their tracking. It's literally a consent box that Facebook may or may not ignore, depending on how hard they want to roll those dice. Um, if you have like an evil application on your phone that wants to track you, it's gonna track you regardless of what you click. So, anyway, that's our show for tonight. Um, yeah, that's our show. Sorry, we got did, we got through without giving you a cookie banner. Didn't, didn't mean to to end on on a sour note, but uh, hey, if you wanted to end on a sweet note, I have some cookies if you'll accept them. Yes, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, with that said, have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. See ya. Bye, everybody.
29 minutes. I didn't think it would go that long. Okay. <laughs> I didn't either. All right, there we go.